Having created the interface between the white matter and the gray matter, we are ready to generate streamlines or threads that connect anatomically distinct regions of gray matter. These are estimates of the underlying white matter tracts, and MRTRIX uses a probabilistic approach to do this. A large number of streamlines are generated for each voxel of the gray matter white matter boundary, and then those streamlines are then whittled down based on different criteria that we specify. The direction of the streamline will most likely follow the predominant fiber orientation density, but not always. Due to a large number of samples, some streamlines will follow other directions. TCKGen is the command that will generate the streamlines. The dash ACT option specifies that we will use the anatomically segmented image to constrain our analysis to the white matter. This method will determine that a streamline is valid only if it is biologically plausible. For example, a streamline that terminates in the cerebrospinal fluid will be discarded, since white matter tracts tend to both originate and terminate in gray matter. Backtrack indicates for the current streamline to go back and run the same streamline again if it terminates in a strange place, such as cerebrospinal fluid. Dash max length sets the maximum tract length in voxels that will be permitted. And dash cutoff specifies the FOD amplitude for terminating a tract. For example, a value of 0.06 would not permit a streamline to go along an FOD that is lower than that number. Dash seed underscore GM WMI takes as an input the gray matter white matter boundary that was generated using the 5TT to GM WMI command. Dash and threads can be used to specify the number of processing cores you wish to use in order to speed up the analysis. And finally, dash select indicates how many total streamlines to generate. The last two arguments specify both the input and a label for the output, which we will call tracts 10m.tck. This command can take a couple of hours to run, so we will fade out here and return in a bit. If you want to visualize the output, I recommend extracting a subset by using TCK edit. In this case, we will extract 200,000 of the original 10 million. This output can then be loaded into MRView by using the dash tractography.load option, which will automatically overlay the smaller tracks 200K file onto the pre-processed diffusion weighted image. This will generate a figure like the following. Remember to inspect this image to make sure that the streamlines end where you think they should. In other words, the streamlines should be constrained to the white matter and they should be color coded appropriately. For example, the corpus callosum should be mostly red and the corona radiata should be mostly blue. Although we have created a diffusion image with reasonable streamlines, also known as a tractogram, we will still have a problem with some of the white matter tracts being overfitted and others being underfitted. This problem can be addressed by using the TKSIFT2 command. Certain tracks can be overrepresented by the amount of streamlines that pass through them, not necessarily because they contain more fibers, but because the fibers tend to all be oriented in the same direction. To counterbalance this overfitting, the command TCKSIFT2 will create a text file containing weights for each voxel in the brain. Just as before, we use ACT to specify anatomically constrained tractography, specify the number of threads, and give it an input and output. This command can also take a few hours, so we will fade out at this point. The output from the command, sift underscore one m dot txt, can be used with the command tck to connect home to create a matrix of how much each ROI is connected with every other ROI in the brain, a figure known as a connectome. We will see how to do that in the next video.